टूडे मॉर्निंग वेन आई सॉ निहाल गेम इट सेंट मी इन टू अ नोस्टालजिया मोड बैक इन टू ट्वेंटी फोर्टीन वेन वी फर्स्ट मेट हिम एट द वर्ल्ड जूनियर्स इन पुणे दिस वॉज द लिटिल किड वेन ही वॉज वॉट टेन ईयर्स ओल्ड सो इंटेंस सो अमेजिंग द रीजन एंड ऑल्सो यू नो देर वेर मेनी जर्नलिस्ट हियर आई रिमेंबर दिस पिक्चर वेरी मच इज विथ मनीषा मोहिते who is a well very well known uh, journalist who has covered world championship matches and all of that and knows anand and hari krishna and all of them and when she saw nihal she said i'm going to take a picture with this boy because some day he will be an amazing chess player maybe a world champion and the reason why i'm showing you all of this is because nihal sarin has entered world top 100 in fact world number 90 now with his live rating of 2654 he has broken into top 100 which is tremendous as you can see here uh, he is above some very very well known solid gms like nayer mamedov sarich kori volokitin rakhmanov grigorian it's it's tremendous uh right now he's playing at the serbia open and he is in scintillating form right now with sole leader on 7 out of 8 and in the last round he beat igor kovalenko and this is nihal's performance whooping 2827 gaining 7 16.6 elo points and this is him like two draws and six victories there well what is very nice about nihal is not just that his results are tremendous but also the fact that his game quality is very high and we are going to have a look at the game and we will see how this boy fared so let's have a look nihal is white igor kovalenko is black he opens the game with 1 d4 d5 knight f3 knight f6 and now one of nihal's openings that he uses when he wants to have a fighting game of chess the london system with bishop f4 c5 by kovalenko e3 knight to c6 knight bd2 and now cd4 ed4 and bishop f5 now this is played uh, against the move bishop d3 you don't want the white bishop to come here you could also play bishop g4 and then it would transpose into some kind of a karo khan variation you know the exchange variation of karo khan bishop f5 and now a lot of players would play here c3 uh, e6 queen b3 but nihal decided to go for the more positional approach with bishop b5 it's very interesting because um rook c8 was played and i'll tell you the point of it knight e5 by nihal putting pressure there and now uh, just a line for you to see <clears throat> like in this position black made a mistake with bishop d7 i did not like this move and we'll see why this is wrong kovalenko who's a by the way a small note about nihal's opponent igor kovalenko he is from latvia and is a very aggressive player at some point he was 2700 plus as well so he's a very strong player queen b6 and i was looking at this idea and thinking that nihal would take pawn takes and knight b3 this is exactly how you want to play in the london you want to clamp on the dark squares and here black should be very careful and uh, play the move h5 i believe because if you go e6 then there is this move g4 which could become very dangerous bishop g6 h4 and uh, yeah that bishop is in trouble if you have to play h5 then after knight g6 fg6 this doesn't look great okay but maybe it's playable well because of all these reasons you know you will you will take and take and then put knight b3 kovalenko said i'll go bishop d7 and i don't want to spoil my structure like if you take on c6 i'll take back with the bishop if you take here i'll take with the rook and i won't let you take advantage of the c5 square fair enough Nihal now took the bishop queen takes c3 e6 castles a6 and bishop d3 and this is the position where i would say nihal was looking for this he has the bishop pair well positioned and a small advantage out of the opening nothing much to worry about for him 
and I liked his next move here and I want to ask you what would you play here as white. Think, pause the video and try to come up with an answer. The main thing that an opponent must do when someone has the bishop pair is to exchange one of the bishops. And that's the reason why Nihal does not take the exchange right now. He plays bishop g5. Good understanding. Also now castling becomes impossible because it will spoil your structure with bishop f6. So bishop goes back to e7. And this is the moment where I really liked uh, Nihal's next couple of moves. Rook e1. Uh, this is a natural move. Queen c7 and now queen f3. So he clearly understood that before putting the knight to f3, I need my queen out here. Maybe it will go to h3 and it will be well placed. Here, uh, if black had castled, I was just looking at this position for some time and uh, a very nice idea is to play rook e2. Double the rooks on the e file, bringing and this will be very useful. Also possible is to just go rook e3 and switch the rook over. And I can understand why Kovalenko didn't want to castle into it with this one bishop looking here. Queen also active, bishop is here, the rook can swing over. So that's the reason why he went knight d7 and he said, Nihal, would you like to exchange the bishops? Because now if you go bishop f4, I will come back bishop d6. Uh, bishop d6. So Nihal said, okay, fine, let me exchange. Actually, Nihal could have kept his bishop with bishop e3 and perhaps that was a stronger move. But okay, he went bishop takes e7, knight takes e7, queen h3 once again stopping castling. So he went queen f4, this was a good move, knight to f3. And I like this part of the game where Kovalenko uh, tried to maneuver his pieces, rook e3, g6, rook e1, and now an important move h5. Uh, this is a good move because if he castled, then Nihal could go g3. Now if the queen goes back here, then well, say, God save the black king here. It's going to get mated. So uh, queen f6 and then g4 with the idea of maybe g5. And uh, so Kovalenko said, let me not get into all that mess. Let me first play my pawn to h5 so that g3, g4 is not possible g3, queen f6, queen came back to g2 and now if uh, castles, I believe Nihal would have played h4 and would have wanted to put his knight on g5. Kovalenko went knight f5, Nihal took, he could have also moved his rook back but he took here gf5, h4 which was a nice move. Now clamping down on the g5 square which is an outpost. You can never then kick it away with f6 because then the e6 pawn falls. King d8 was played. Very interesting move. Uh, f4 looked very natural, like you want to open up the position, but after gf4, you cannot go rook g8, and also the knight is coming here. So let's say, for example, queen f4, knight g5. Already, white is the one putting a lot of pressure here, and f4 turned out to be good for white. So, king d8, knight g5, king c8, queen f3. Beautiful move. Because h5 is a weakness, okay, Nihal is keeping an eye on that pawn. So now this rook cannot move. Kovalenko played king b8 and here I want you to think a bit and come up with the next move that you will play for white. Wonderful chess by Nihal. Uh, try to come up with what would you do here as white. You know, when you see such positions and when you see the player making the move, you realize how strong he is. Now, there are so many options, you know, here you could think about rerouting your knight here. You can think about improve your, improving your king. You can think about playing your pawn to a4. I mean, there are so many, but Nihal goes b3. And this is actually a very, very classy move. He wants to open up the position because the king is slightly unsafe. King a7. And now think about what would you do here as white once again. Pause. Think, try to think like world number 90 player, Nihal Sari. C4, just crash through. C4, very nice move. Takes, and now of course not take back because rook takes C4 and black is doing fine. But D5, opening up the position even further. ED5, and here it became kind of an important moment in the game. 
the game, uh, Kovalenko, by the way, has defended quite staunchly. Nihal had to play rook to e7, now attacking the knight and also the f7 pawn. And he would be better, although the position is still very, very complicated, like rook d8, knight f7, rook goes back. And yes, Nihal is better, but it's not at all clear. But when Nihal took queen takes d5, there is an unbelievable defensive motif here and I want you to think about it. I'm going to tell you the first move here, which is c3, not to defend the knight. The knight is attacked. In the game, he went knight b6, which is the most natural move. But there is c3 and try to calculate this in your head. What happens if Nihal takes the knight? What is black going to do next? And so on. Think. Okay, so after queen d7, I hope you have thought the right move here is rook d8, not c2, trying to make a queen, because after rook e7, even if you make a queen, there's a checkmate here, and that is a big problem. One of the pieces will have to get passive, and then after rook c1, he's just winning, because one rook is passive. Rook d8, pushing the queen away, queen has to take the pawn, and now again, only move c2. This makes it a very nice puzzle. So now threat is to, you know, queen the pawn <laughs> or maybe first take and then queen the pawn. So queen takes queen, rook takes and now rook d1 could be a very, very strong idea with the queen. So what should white do? Actually, white doesn't have too many options here. Very surprisingly, like if he goes rook c3, then after rook, d, uh, rook c6, very important move. Uh, because if you go rook d1, this is wrong because of knight f3. But rook c6 is a very strong move and it is actually black who wins this position. So the right move here is knight f3. Why I'm analyzing this? Because it's a very nice variation. Uh, and I'll show you the point of it in a bit that here black has only one move to hold the game. Everything else loses. Like if you play here, uh, say rook c6. Then I just go rook c1. If you give a check, I just come back here and I'm winning because the knight will take this rook if it takes. Uh, rook d1 is met with rook c3 and now rook c6 is met with rook takes c2. That's the knight neat point. When you take the rook on e1, I take with the knight and it defends the rook. So it doesn't work. And finally, that's why the only move here is rook e6. If you found this brilliant brilliant rook e6 and now after rook takes e6 rook d1 the point is now the rook cannot go to c3 it cannot go to c6 to stop this pawn and after king g2 queen this was equal position rook and knight and a pawn against a queen and would have ended perhaps in a draw so you know i, I showed this not because i know that any human can find it but it was pretty especially that move rook e6 okay knight b6 by kovalenko nihal took the pawn here, maybe Kovalenko should have gone into this endgame and I think he had good drawing chances here. But he decided to play c takes b3, queen takes b3, rook h c8 and now Nihal maneuvered his knight to f4 square. The, the key difference here guys is that the white king is safer because of these pawns while the black king is always under pressure. It has only two pawns covering it. And somehow the rooks are entering along with the queen. It's dangerous. Rook c1 turned out to be a mistake. Uh, he should have gone rook c2. But rook c1 and now Nihal just improved his knight. Queen d4. King g2. This typical Nihal move. King g2. He knows that the king later on will come under some checks here. Let me improve it. And he always finds time for such moves. Rook c3. And I think this is where... Uh, rook c1 was played and Kovalenko went horribly wrong. He should have taken the queen a b3 and uh, well Nihal would have ground this out I believe. The two rooks are stronger than the queen but it's still a fight you know. The way it happened he took here and now white to play and win the game. You all can see it right. Can you beat Kovalenko? Yes. After I guess four hours of play Kovalenko was tired and Nihal just played 92. Attacking the queen and the rook, a nasty fork. And after this, uh, Nihal was totally winning. And here, Kovalenko resigned with this.
Nihal Sarin won the game and has reached on seven points out of eight. Tremendous game. I hope you liked it. I enjoyed it. It was really a very high quality game by Nihal and that's what makes his play tremendous. It's not just the results but also the quality of play. Last round today coming up and guys if you see this he is facing Vladimir Fedosiev. Uh, in the last round, top seed of the tournament with the black pieces. It's not going to be easy. Fedosiev is a big, big fighter. He loves to fight in every game. And uh, at some point, Fedosiev at 2750 plus rating. So he's very strong. And also, if you look at the tie breaks, Nihal has uh, tie break to 36.5. Fedosiev as well. So maybe if he draws and if someone like Bernatsky or even our very own Aditya Mittal rises up, uh, maybe Nihal would not could have some problems so even Nihal would want to win this game to win the tournament but good news is Aditya Mittal is very close to his GM norm Pranav V I also believe is very close to his GM norm he drew against El Taj 70 low points plus great times for Indian chess this is Sagar Shah signing off bye bye